On August 22, 1939, Adolf Hitler was asked how he was going to get away with the Jewish Holocaust. His response was, who, after all, speaks about the annihilation of the Armenians? The Armenian Genocide was Hitler's blueprint to the Holocaust. Who nowadays speaks about the Armenians? Not many. Few remember the brutal killings, few remember the death marches, and few remember the heartless massacres of 1.5 million Armenians. In 1943, Raphael Lampkin, a Polish lawyer of Jewish descent, defined genocide as the deliberate and systematic destruction, in whole or in part, of an ethnic, racial, religious, or national group. He coined the word genocide to specifically describe the extermination of the Armenians in 1915. But why were the Armenians that group of people? And why does it continue to cause a reaction in the world today? The Armenian genocide started with the sick man of Europe, the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire at the time had power over almost all of present-day Middle East. The Ottoman Empire's strength relied on the power of its army. It was called the Sick Empire because the empire was slowly crumbling to the end of its reign. Its army and control was weakening. Because of the sultans, the Ottoman Empire was an Islamic country. The Ottoman Empire consisted mostly of Muslims and a very small population of Christians. Armenians made up most of the Christian population, as well as most of the middle class. The Armenians were called the Loyal Group. They worked as tailors, shoemakers, artisans, poets, and other small but important jobs. Because they were Christians, the Armenians were shunned by their Muslim leader. They were treated as second-class citizens and had fewer rights than the Muslims. Their taxes were higher, they could not learn their own language, and they could not serve in the military. These were just a few of the many restrictions on Armenians. They had no religious freedom, and they were not allowed to practice Christianity. Even when they were being discriminated against, they followed through and always paid their taxes. But the Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire refused to submit and assimilate Islam. During the 1890s, tension began to grow between the Armenians and the Turks. The Armenians wanted more rights, and they no longer wanted to be second-class citizens. The Sultan of the time, Abdul Hamid, responded to their pleas and protests with the Hamidian massacres. 300,000 Armenians were killed in the prominent Armenian town, Adana. The Hamidian massacres gained Abdul Hamid the nickname the Bloody Sultan. In 1908, the Young Turk party overthrew Abdul Hamid and his regan. They were a group of Islamic Turks led by three men, Enver Pasha, Jamal Pasha, and Talat Pasha. They were the Committee of Union and Progress, also known as the CUP. Pan-Turkism was the main ideology of the Young Turk Party in which they had two principal aims. One, to eliminate all non-Turkish peoples, including the Armenians. And two, the political unification of all Turkish people. The Armenians were the first obstacle to these aims. Talat Pasha, the Minister of Interior, sent a telegram to his army generals saying, the government has decided to destroy completely all the Armenians in Turkey. An end must be put to their existence, however criminal the measures must be, and no regard must be paid to either age, sex, or conscientious scruples. First, all men and boys of age were forcefully drafted into the Turkish army. They were used as labor slaves to build roads, and when the grueling work was completed, they were all slaughtered, leaving the women, children, and elderly helpless and defenseless. They executed the second step of their systematic plan to eliminate all Armenians on April 24, 1915. Approximately 300 Armenian community leaders, lawyers, judges, intellectuals, doctors, priests, and the great composer Gomi Das were arrested and brutally murdered by the authorities. This day marks the start of the Armenian Genocide. The next step was the extermination of all civilian Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. Young women were raped, pregnant mothers bayoneted, priests crucified on their altars, and entire families wiped out. The final step in the Turks' systematic destruction of the Armenians was the death marches. The Armenians were told they were being deported to another country and had to leave by a minute's notice, stripped of all their belongings except the clothes on their backs. They were forced to walk for miles into the Syrian desert Dizor. The Turkish soldiers so showed no mercy and the Armenians perished by deliberate starvation, heat, exhaustion, thirst, rape, and murder. Young girls committed suicide by drowning themselves in the Euphrates River to avoid being raped by the Turkish soldiers. The ones that could not continue 
left were killed along the way. And the Armenians that survived the death marches were thrown into caves and burned alive. Nobody was spared. Until present day, Dazor is littered with the mass graves and bones of Armenian victims. <laughs> Fortunately, some Armenians had escaped. They would hide under the protection of a kind Turkish family or have a necessary trade which the Turks required. Some families were able to flee to nearby Middle Eastern countries. Some were sold as slaves, and Armenian girls were taken by the Turkish soldiers as their wives and were forced to convert to Islam and submit to their captors. One family survived because of their unique chalk trade. There were just enough Armenians that escaped to rebuild the population. But what happened to these Armenians, and where did they go? They were not welcome in Turkey, so they had to leave, but this was nearly impossible for them. They had no passports, money, or relatives. The Turks had left them with nothing. By the end of the genocide in 1924, approximately 1.5 million Armenians had been slaughtered by the Turks. The remaining Armenians had allowed the Armenian genocide to go unnoticed for almost 50 years. In 1965, almost 400,000 Armenians flooded the streets of Yerevan, the current capital of Armenia, and performed a demonstration of the Armenian genocide. These demonstrations are called the Yerevan demonstrations. This brought the Armenian genocide to the attention of the rest of the world. Some countries started recognizing it as a genocide, but many others were too intimidated by the threats coming from Turkey. Turkey still denies that there ever was an Armenian genocide. They claim that it was a war with atrocities coming from both the Muslims and the Christians. Saying that there even was an Armenian genocide is insulting Turkishness which is a result of Article 301, established in 2005. Many countries have yet to recognize the Armenian Genocide. A big reaction the world had to the Armenian Genocide was led by Adolf Hitler. It was the Jewish Holocaust. The Holocaust was, in part, a reaction of the Armenian Genocide. Hitler paid close attention to the Genocide and from it learned how to get away with killing millions of people. While running for election, President Obama, just like many other American presidents, said he would accept the genocide. He gained many Armenian votes because of this, but when he took office in 2008, he backed out of his promise. He was worried that if he accepted the genocide, Turkey would not allow an important American airbase in Turkey to remain. That airbase was necessary because of the ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, so Obama would not accept the Armenian genocide. Turkey has thrown its political financial weight against the reality of history. Lobbying politicians to persuade them to vote against an Armenian Genocide Resolution to commemorate April 24th, and lobbying continues to go on every year. The genocide lasted 10 years, yet it reformed the lives of millions of people. The Young Turk Party had accomplished its goal and had murdered nearly all of the Armenians living in their empire. But immediately after the Armenian Genocide, the empire had finally come to the end of its reign. The Armenian way of life had reformed, and they had to start over and find a new place to live and a new way to survive. They were dispersed throughout the Middle East. Some went to America, others to Lebanon or Syria. The Armenians had built their own community from what little they had to begin with. The only languages they knew were Turkish and Armenian, so it was hard to communicate with other people. It was unusual for the Armenians to feel so safe, since the hovering eyes of the Turkish soldiers weren't upon them. The Armenians felt like aliens in the countries they had moved to. Armenia itself had become smaller as it was consumed by Turkey. Now the Armenians are working towards having the genocide recognized. William Sororin said so himself, Go ahead, destroy Armenia. See if you can do it. Send them into a desert without bread and water. Burn their homes and churches. Let's see if they will not laugh, sing, and pray again. For when two of them meet anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new Armenia.